Ja, meine Damen und Herren, kommen Sie, trauen Sie sich zu uns. Wir legen nämlich jetzt gleich los, ganz pünktlich, die nächste Stunde. Ähm, der erste Talk des auch heute sehr dichten Talkprogramms, das ist sozusagen unsere Matinee-Veranstaltung zum Einstimmen. Dabei geht es um ein ganz wichtiges Thema, den Dialog zwischen Kunst, Kultur und Wirtschaft. Und wir freuen uns hier. Mein Name ist Katrin Lutz und ich darf dieses Programm organisieren im Namen der Art Cologne des Teams dass Sie so zahlreich erschienen sind. Irgendwer winkt, aber nicht mir. Ah, okay, alles klar. Ich wink mal zurück. Genau, genau. den Dialog zwischen Kunst, Kultur und Wirtschaft. Und so haben wir hier als Gast den Kulturkreis der deutschen Wirtschaft, der schon seit vielen Jahren seinen Ars Viva Kunstpreis herausgibt, der inzwischen immer verbunden mit einer Ausstellung sehr, sehr viel Beachtung findet und durch deutsche Kunstinstitutionen zieht. Das heißt, dahinter verbirgt sich eine ganze Menge, die es zu erzählen, berichten, diskutieren gibt. Und in diesem Sinne lade ich jetzt unsere Gäste auf die Bühne in einer ersten Runde in Englisch. Ne? Das habe ich richtig. Ja. Genau. Deutsch an und dann ich habe ich hab ein Mikro, meine Herren. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank, Katrin Lutz, für diese Einführung. Wir freuen uns, jetzt haben sich die Reihen doch ein bisschen gefüllt. Mein Name ist Prasanna Ummen. Ich bin Moderatorin, Speakerin und Kommunikationsberaterin in der Kultur und Bildung. Und ich freue mich wahnsinnig, dass ich heute mal in meiner Heimatstadt in Köln moderieren darf und nur zehn Minuten mit dem Fahrrad gebraucht habe, um hier hinzukommen und nicht an irgendwelchen Bahnhöfen rumgestanden habe. Also herzlichen Dank einfach auch, dass ich das heute hier machen darf. Ja, wir sind hier auf einer der wichtigsten Kunstmessen in Europa, auf der Art Cologne, auf die wir KölnerInnen natürlich auch sehr stolz sind. Und ich freue mich wirklich darauf, diesen Talk mitgestalten zu können. 70 Jahre Ars Viva, es lebe die Kunst. Ich habe es absichtlich umgedreht, weil diese 70 Jahre schon eine beachtliche Zahl sind. Wie im Titel anklingt, geht es heute um ein Museum, äh, um, eine, um eine Tradition und um ein Jubiläum. Wir feiern einen Preis, der sich trotz langer Tradition sehr viel mit Erneuerung beschäftigt. Der Kulturkreis der deutschen Wirtschaft, der diesen Preis seit nunmehr 70 Jahren, also jetzt zum 71. Mal auslobt, hat heute vier Menschen eingeladen, die er genau dazu durch mich befragen möchte. Was dieser Preis und auch Förderung im Allgemeinen heute mitten im 21. Jahrhundert krisengeschüttelt durchaus leisten muss, um KünstlerInnen und auch ihre Arbeit bestmöglich zu unterstützen. Und auf dieser Ebene reden wir nicht nur kulturpolitisch, wir beschäftigen uns auch mit tatsächlich der künstlerischen, inhaltlichen Ebene und zwar mit dem Genre, so nenne ich das, Installationskunst. Auch hier wollen wir aber die kulturpolitische Dimension in unserem Talk mitdenken mit folgenden Fragen, die wir gemeinsam ein bisschen in der Vorbereitung besprochen haben. Welche Räume braucht die Kunst eigentlich? Das ist eine große kulturpolitische Frage mit diesem kleinen Zusatz, um auch ein breiteres Publikum zu erreichen. Was ist die Aufgabe von öffentlich geförderten Kultureinrichtungen wie beispielsweise Museen neben der traditionellen kuratorischen und konservatorischen Aufgabe? Wie muss oder hat sich diese Aufgabe bereits verändert und wie können private und Unternehmenssammlungen eigentlich öffentliche Häuser unterstützen oder auch miteinander agieren und sich gegenseitig unterstützen. Und bevor wir jetzt über diese, wie ich finde, wichtigen Zukunftsfragen sprechen, erlauben Sie mir in der Rolle der Moderation ein paar Worte noch zum Hintergrund des Ars Viva Preises für Bildende Kunst. Mit diesem Preis werden jährlich, dieses Mal eben zum 71. Mal, drei junge KünstlerInnen, die in Deutschland leben, ausgezeichnet. Damit ist aber, was ich ganz toll finde, nicht nur Geld verbunden, sondern ich nenne es ein multifunktionales Förderpaket. Da gibt es eine monetäre Komponente von 5000 Euro, dann gibt es aber auch die Komponente, die nicht unwichtig ist für KünstlerInnen, der internationalen Sichtbarkeit. Das sind zwei Solo-Ausstellungen in namhaften Institutionen für zeitgenössische Kunst in Deutschland und im Ausland. Und dann gibt es auch noch, auch nicht unwichtig, eine Netzwerksäule und zwar für eine mehrwöchige Residency auf Fogo Island in Kanada. 
Und das allerletzte, die allerletzte Säule ist, ich nenne es das Merchandise im Kunstbetrieb, ein zweisprachiger Katalog inklusive Essays über die ausgezeichneten Arbeiten. Es ist eigentlich eine Art All-Inclusive-Paket. Und auch darüber reden wir gleich ein bisschen. Wir müssen heute tollerweise ganz zeitgemäß mehrsprachig agieren. Und das heißt, wir teilen dieses Gespräch jetzt der Einfachheit halber in zwei Teile auf. Ich beginne gleich mit der, äh, mit der diesjährigen Preisträger in Daniel Lee auf Englisch. Und danach geht es weiter mit drei PanelistInnen, die auch zu den Fragen, die ich eben genannt habe, mit diskutieren werden. Und jetzt legen wir los. I switch to English now. First, I would like to introduce and welcome Daniel Lee, an Indonesian Brazil artist from Brazil, who lives and works in Berlin. And Daniel is the Arts Weaver Awardee in, winner in 2024. In 2000 13, they, so there's no pronoun, obtained a master's in teaching and fine arts at the Sao Paulo State University. Daniel Lee's work includes performers, illustra performances, illustrations, and expansive installations, non-human beings such as bacteria, fungi, plants, minerals are all included in Daniel's work and they are all the main protagonists. With this, Daniel sees decay as a visualization of the processual. And Daniel participated in numerous group exhibitions all over the world and carried out their own solo exhibitions. The last solo exhibition called Unnamed Entities took place at the New Museum in New York. They also participated in several arts residencies in Germany, Chile, and Brazil. And now everybody who knows me knows that I always like to share a quote from the ones who are talking here. So I quote, my artwork emerges from my sensibilities, my experiences, my hands. But, I also, but it can also sometimes be more intelligent than me. In the past, I have taken up to four years to make sense of work that I have created. The art is ahead of me. That is why I feel the need to become more acquainted with my work. This body of work is quite different from anything I have created to date. And therefore, my proxy, I am also different. My work changes me. End of quote. Welcome, Daniel Lee. Hi, hi. Hi. It's, no, it's not working yet. So now again. Hello. Hello. Yeah, is it? Can you hear, Daniel? Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Dan. Oh, now it's working, yeah. Hi, thank you for Hi, how are you? Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming on this Sunday morning. Yes. Yeah, I think you have to speak a little bit louder. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's better. No, that's okay. better. Yeah, yeah. So, Daniel, I just quoted you. If the work changes you, what does that mean for the continuity of your work? Uh, a, a lot of things. Like, in the context of that, I was doing a new body of work, and then when the work was ready, I was like, what, what is this? Uh, and then this type of shock made me see there's a gap, but also in the past, I proposed images that they were quite mysterious. And then, you know how art gets us. Sometimes we're having our daily basis things, and then suddenly something happened, and boom, we remember an image, we remember an artwork, we remember something that correlates with that feeling. And the same thing happened to me. Um, I've been grieving the loss of somebody who I loved very much in my life. And then four years before this death, I did an installation in Hong Kong that had this empty, mysterious chair. When this person died, immediately, boom, that image came. So in a way, this is what I'm talking about the time that the works needs to make senses. For me, first come practice, after comes the theory or comes the concept, um, and then the senses in a way as well. Yeah. So it's connected with your personal life. 
there are moments, I think it's a, a rhythm. Sometimes it's very personal to go something very big and then something very big to go something very personal. I call this relationship from micro to macro, um, from family stories to politics, mm -hmm. uh, to large narratives, to something very intimate, and then this constant movement. So, I mean, uh, uh, receiving an award is a huge achievement. What does this award mean to you mm. personally and also uh, um, regarding your work? Uh, well, I, have, I consider I have 15 years of career. Oh, thank you. Uh, and this was actually my first prize. Mm -hmm. So in a way, there is a place to be seen, to be recognized yes. by being working for such a long time. But also, at the other hand, there's a, a welcoming. I've chosen Germany, and I also think Germany chose me to make this a home. Uh, so having this type of uh, acknowledging is a welcoming. But on the other hand, it's also very important to, now that I'm committed to live here, um, to know better the scene, to know better the cultural agents, and, to, and thus to be part of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, connection to the country where you are based in is very important. And what I liked about this prize is that it also enables connection between the awardees, especially it's also seen in the catalog. So how did you experience this connection or the network with the, the exchange with the other awardees? There are three of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was fortunate to already see the works of Athena and Chandler before we were, um, and then I was quite curious about their work. So coming together, I usually work with large scale installations, so that sense is usually solo. And with this recent body of work that I've been presenting, I've, I'm able to do group shows <laughs> in a smaller mm -hmm. scale, so it was also quite interesting how the works they create um, bridges with other artists, and that makes another type of experience. Yeah, yeah. So we currently have a show in, uh, help me out, Ludwig, Ludwig, Ludwigshafen. 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 Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Our first show with the Ars Viva, uh, pardon me. Uh, and that's a very tiny, it's a small venue that has a characteristic of a house, but I think the show is quite warm and nice, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, group shows are not uh, not only easy, it's also complicated. Were there any, when you, when you, you know, exhibit together, was that, did you have to get um, to know each other better? Was it content-wise, was it uh, easy to work with? Or I, I think it's important for us artists to always create a healthy relationship between our peers. Um, it, the competitions are very, uh, and prizes are good, but competitions must have some type of care to not create harassment and not to create yeah. harsh conditions between our workers. We also coming from a place that worldwide doesn't have a structural, professional situation that gives us rights. Here in Germany is a place that I'm very glad that we have uh, uh, structures like KSK, BBK, yeah. uh, rights to retirement, uh, with the contribution that we do to the state, but, at this, but this is a very uh, exception. And I also think it comes, again, from the small to the big, like the relationship among artists is also a reflection of how culture is held. So I think also me, I, I also think it's important between my other artists to have some type of healthness uh, between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can imagine. When I read the articles in the catalog, um, I got the feeling that you all want to foster a change of mindset regarding the normative setup in the art world. I mean, in and Western, white, of very often also male-dominated societies. In this context, what do artists up, uprising artists need in terms of funding and support from the institutions, but also from the sponsors nowadays? It's a large question. Yes, I, I uh, think. no. <laughs> <laughs> but no it's a uh, huge question. Um, mm. it, it was very surprising that when I saw also the other winners of Ars Viva, I saw, 
I, I, I didn't feel lonely. I felt that in a way we were having our own perspective of diversity, but also uh, being very respected by our work first before our identity. I think there is a big important work that is necessary to be done in the world is like how the society reflects, the artworks and the institutions reflects what the society is. Uh, and this is pretty much basic, you know, and not only in the arts, we need to see that in every areas, in um, medicine, in all the areas, it's about accessibility, and then we're talking about democracy. Democracy and also just, justice, just. Uh, it's a large work. I think I'll stay with first with democracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, how, uh, or what kind of spaces do you need in terms of change of the work? I mean, we are talking also about installational uh, arts, so what kind of space? My, my work has always been very challenging for institutions, yeah. and actually the new museum was actually my first museum exhibition. Prior to that, I was showing in uh, art festivals or spaces where, for arts that are not conventional in a mm -hmm. sense of conservatorship, in a sense yes. of a standards of a uh, museum that needs to have a conventional approach to conservatorship of artworks. And in this sense, I knew for a long time that museums were not approaching me because I'm proposing things that are changing with time, they're decaying, they're growing, there's fungi, there's smells, nice smells, horrible smells, <laughs> okay smells. Uh, and, and in this sense, I knew they had some type of prejudgment on my practice, but only when I started to work with the museum, I was able to bring the conversation to the same level and we could really negotiate what is possible, what is not possible, what is my responsibility, what is shared responsibility in order for this work to exist. Um, and, and it's still going on. Uh, so I think that's also where the work starts because I work with site-specific, I work with works that are researching the institution, the story of the building, the context of the building, the personal relationships of people who work, work there. The so memories. it's a lot about communication A skills. lot about communication. So, so yeah. <laughs> and diplomacy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. the, to, to start making a work, I need at least a year of creation mm -hmm. and then a, a more time of meeting the people who work in the institution. So you can change routines and in the end there's a working relationship which works. That's where the work starts because also I need to understand like what are the big no-nos in the institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is possible here? What's not possible? How far can we go together? How much can the work push? Uh, so then it's not only my responsibility starts to become institutional responsibility as well, how much we can go. Daniel, I'm so sorry. We are already at the end of our talk oh, okay. because due to time issues, but I have one last question mm -hmm. for you because I always like to ask future questions. What is your next project or is it still, is, the wor is it work in progress so it develops by... A, a lot. Uh, next semester is quite full. Uh, we have our upcoming show of Ars Viva in Belvedere 21 in, in Vienna. So that's uh, February. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very excited. It's a very different venue. So it's interesting how the this connection with uh, Chandler and Atiena, who also won the prize, will show a different layer. Mm -hmm. So this I'm very excited for. Very I have a solo exhibition in Artsunje in Seoul in South Korea in February. Two solo shows in the galleries, one solo show in Sao Paulo Gallery, Casa Triangolo Gallery. Not bad. One oh. solo show in my, in my Berlin Gallery, Barbara Wien, mm -hmm. uh, and also a uh, Hamburger Bahnhof uh, solo exhibition in June as well. Thank you very much. We are looking forward to seeing Thank more you so of much. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, for... A big applause my, my, my for big Daniel Lee. All morning. the best. And I see you later. They are now changing the yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You take the glass and the bottle. <laughs> <laughs>